Today, we are searching for the classiest woman of all time. Rewind! When we think of a person with style, elegance, and class, a picture of Audrey Hepburn immediately pops up in our head. Not only was Audrey Hepburn a style icon, she was also a humanitarian and helped children all around the world. Throughout her career, Audrey Hepburn inspired Americans to follow her lead on both fashion as well as charitable giving, leaving a legacy for others to use their fame and influence to promote positive change in the world. But Audrey Hepburn wasn't always this glamorous woman that you are thinking of now. She had a tough childhood in Nazi-occupied Holland. Hepburn and her family had so little food that her brothers had to eat dog food and she had to eat tulip bulbs. Hepburn became very malnourished and for the rest of her life would stay very thin. But Hepburn was determined to stay strong and she was committed to becoming a great ballerina. As we know, Audrey Hepburn did not become a ballerina. She became an actress. In fact, she became a very famous actress. She even won the 1953 Best Actress Oscar at the Academy Awards for her performance in Roman Holiday. Now for someone to read the Best Actress nominations. Ladies and gentlemen, in New York City, Miss Audrey Hepburn in Roman Holiday. I want to say thank you to everybody who in these past months and years have helped, guided, and given me so much. I'm truly, truly grateful and terribly happy. I think Audrey created a stir and such an impact on society because frankly we'd never seen anyone who looked like her. She was a gamine, she was a little bit boyish, but she was feminine. And prior to that, in terms of what was acceptable in terms of Hollywood starlets, was this very blousy, obvious Jane Mansfield, Marilyn Monroe, big skirts, big hair, big chests. After her Oscar in 1953, her career skyrocketed. Hepburn was the star of movies such as Breakfast at Tiffany's, Won't you join me? No. People don't belong to people. Of course they do. I'm not gonna let anyone put me in a cage. My Fair Lady. Just you wait in me again, just you wait. You'll be sorry, but your tears will be too light. Sabrina. All right. The meeting of the board of directors of the Larrabee Industries will now come to order and others. Audrey Hepburn was so cherished that for a decade she was the most highly paid woman in the world. My godfather was George Cukor and he was directing My Fair Lady and I got to come on the set and, and meet her. When she came out to Hollywood I remember the excitement of the whole town. It was as if a princess was coming, a foreign princess. When she began to feel something about something, the lights turned on and uh, you, you could only watch and be enchanted. She was not just an incredible actress, she was also a style icon. Audrey Hepburn made many things we still wear today famous. Hepburn made oversized sunglasses, little black dresses, pearls, and ballet flats, essential items for any woman to own. And these clothes are still worn today, on the runway and in everyday life. So designers today, even now, if they see something li they like, a really clean look, a modern look, a look that works, they'll say, oh, that's so Audrey. So it's almost an adjective, a shorthand to that kind of clean American, yet sophisticated style that always looks fabulous and always works. People followed her look so much that the director of Sabrina, Billy Wilder, proclaimed, this girl single-handed will make bosoms a thing of the past. 
Mary Quaint dared to call Audrey the most stylish woman who ever lived. I think that's one thing that appeals to women, that they look at her and, and she's not the cookie cutter blonde, but they know that she's still beautiful. And it's that unique quality that takes her to the top of the list every year, even today. I actually got kicked out of high school after I went to see Breakfast at Tiffany's because I just became Holly Golightly and I had sunglasses and you weren't allowed to wear sunglasses at my school, I just wouldn't take them off. People really wanted to look and be like Hepburn. There was even a diet called the Little Black Dress Diet, invented by Michael Van Straten in 2001. When people thought of a little black dress, they also thought of Audrey Hepburn, and they envisioned themselves as this very skinny, gorgeous star, and so they tried the diet. Furthermore, a little black dress perfume was created by Avon in 2001. So now you could dress and smell like Audrey Hepburn. But for some reason, no one could capture her whole essence, which was what made her so unique and what kept people striving to be like her. In fact, people are still trying to be like her today in more ways than just fashion. Actors such as Liv Tyler were inspired by Audrey Hepburn to start working for charity. Tyler said, I was really blown away and inspired by everything that she had done for children via and through UNICEF. And I guess it really, really floored me in a way that I hadn't ever felt toward a public figure before. Hepburn worked for UNICEF as a special ambassador for five years beginning in 1988. In that time, she made 50 trips for UNICEF. She helped many children by going on talk shows and making public appearances on behalf of UNICEF. I think I'm, I've been terribly privileged. And it's logic that somebody who's privileged should do something for those who are not. Again, that's the way I was brought up and everybody around me and my family did so. Considered the right thing to do. Every time that Hepburn made an appeal to Barbara Walters, one million dollars were donated to UNICEF. This meant that people were donating because of Hepburn alone. This is an example of how she made normal citizens aware of the world around them and also helpful to other countries. At the same time, I'm longing to pick up one of these children and, 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 and give it some kind of warmth. On the other hand, they're so frail that the you know, they're going to break the law or hurt them. And, and it's unbearable. It's um, it just is so totally unacceptable. Plus, she gave up to 15 appearances a day for UNICEF. If I may sum it up in a very short phrase, and this I will say as long as I have breath, for the people of Ethiopia, all they need is an assistance to help themselves if they are yearning to do. And UNICEF is giving them a spade, let us say, to dig their water wells. Let it not be to dig the grave of their children. She even talked to the U.S. Congress about helping UNICEF in Ethiopia. Hepburn was able to reach out to the public because of her faith. This helped make Americans more socially active and globally helpful. Because of all her work, she was honored by receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1992. She also won the Variety International Humanitarian Award in 1991 because of her complete devotion to the children of the world. Carol Bellamy praises, she was an inspiration. She brought enormous world attention to children. She raised the profile of the challenges they face. That's a legacy that lives on in the wonderful ambassadors that UNICEF now has the honor of working with. Hepburn's work for UNICEF will forever be remembered and is sure to inspire even more people in the future to do as much as they can to help children in need around the world. Audrey Hepburn's legacy will always live on. As Blake Edwards said, I don't know how long we last in people's memories, but if anyone has the right to be remembered, she does.